Muck. Muck. So, you know what kind of detective you want. You know what kind of villain you want. You know how you're going to tell the story. You're going to use dialogue, descriptions, and observations. And you have a pretty good idea what the murder is going to be like, or the actions thereof. But what kind of story do you tell? And in the second part, we're going to talk about that. Every single sentence that you tell to the audience has to be one of these five things in increasing order of importance. The first one being motive, the why. Uh, this is pretty much the basis of a story, um, but it's not as important as you think. What ends up happening in murder mysteries is you get all these people in a room and for some strange reason, they all have a reason to kill somebody. It's a contrivance, but we sort of go along with it as we reveal more about these characters. We delve into their backstory, we talk to them and say, oh yeah, this is probably why this person wanted to kill someone. Whether or not they actually did that is not important. And the two most classic examples for murder are love and money. The way that uh, P.D. James, the murder room, she's a very good author on these issues, says all the motives for murder are covered by the four L's, love, lust, lucre, and loathing. Uh, the most common in Agatha Christie stories is money or inheritance. There's usually this elaborate story of not knowing the you know, dead uncle that someone might have had that goes down the line. So what ends up happening is all these people getting killed off and the murder ends up being some distant relative who will gain the inheritance. And it's up to Poirot to figure out the, the history of the lineage of that family. Now, the concept of, of murder brings up the idea of things like suicide, accidents, manslaughter, assault that becomes murder, and so forth. So these are things you should be thinking about. Uh, it's a bit more complicated. I would still stay away from that, but I will bring them up just because there are times when, let's say, Poirot isn't the, the, the bastion of justice that we think he is. There's two stories in particular I remember how I said that uh, the detective is either based on justice or honor or community? Well, in two stories, the King of Clubs and Murder on the Orient Express is where he isn't the bastion of justice. He decides to let, uh, in the King of Clubs, he lets one of the murderers go for community reasons. And in Murder, Murder of the Orient Express, if you don't already know, he believes, at least in the original story, that no judge would believe his deduction that everyone did it. In the TV version, he they sort of retcon him into believing in religion more. He, he's praying to God and he just shows the evidence as it was given to him. So keep that in mind, although I, I wouldn't recommend doing it for your first murder mystery story. The second one is the second M is means or the capacity. This is again based off the previous rules of social, physical, and mental. Does the person or, or possible murderer have the physical capacity? Can they, can they lift the boulder? Can they push the boulder over? Can they plunge the dagger into someone? Can they fight? Can they drag the body? That sort of stuff. Do they have the mental capacity? Uh, can they trick someone? Can they plan this elaborate scheme out? Are they very good at these things? Are they quick to think? Are they have great memory? That sort of stuff. And the social capacity. Can they coerce someone? Are they charming? Can they flirt very well? Can they act? Can they make believe that they're someone else? These are all capacities the, the potential murderer has. And it's not limited to the crime. This is based on their, uh, their character almost. Can they, for example, coerce someone to have an accomplice, to have an unwitting actor, so an unwitting accomplice. Can they coerce someone to kill themselves? Which is, again, it's present in murder mystery stories. I would not recommend going that far. It adds a very extra layer of, of complexity, which sort of breaks down every other theory that you might have had for figuring out a murder. Uh, and it's, it's kind of a, a, not a cheap way of doing it, but it, it's sort of like the, the, the linchpin of everything else if you don't get that clue. So it's kind of something you want to reveal early on. And uh, it's 
sort of an intermediate thing. I wouldn't touch it just, just yet. Now the third one, this is not often mentioned in, in crime dramas or, or articulated very well, is the method, the third M. And it's, it's in between. It's very high on the list in, in terms of what I, how I think it should go. It's the how. It is the is like an observable fingerprint. It's the way someone does something. You could say, yep, that's the person who did it. No one else could have done it that way. So you're really asking is, how does someone commit the murder? Um, what's their style? Not whether they have the capacity, but whether, you know, how do they hold the gun? How do they fire the gun? That sort of thing. So uh, if they don't have the capacity to do that, or sorry, if they don't have the method, are they doing that after the fact to cover it up so it looks like they didn't have the capacity? Maybe it's something they do after the fact to make it look like someone else might have done it. So this calls into question not only the crime itself, but the preparation for the crime and then what happened after the crime. So this works again with the second M means, do they have the capacity to plan this out? That works on character. So if they had the, the know-how to plan out the crime up to the crime, great. Did they do other things? Did they, did they uh, backtrack? Did they cover their, their tracks? Did they clean all their fingerprints off? That happens after the crime. So the most common thing for individuals on, on terms of style, in terms of being me, for example, the way I talk, the way I walk, I have a very distinctive way of talking. So that's how someone who's an actor or a, uh, an impersonator, obviously the, the visual appearance, but the way you sound, the way you laugh, the way you talk, and the way you walk. Those are the, the two major things, talking and walking. Other things like neuro, uh, neurotic behavior, idiosyncratic behavior, speech, um, you know, nervous twitches, how you enter and exit a room, these are all the methods of a person and they should be leaving their own versions of fingerprints in your descriptions of the empirical murder scene. Now this also brings up the type of murder if you're going to this deep level of detail. If it's a, a certain method, then we can characterize the murder as an act of passion, let's say. Uh, multiple kinds of stab wounds. Um, was it an act of cold calculated planning? So the opposite of, of a of an act of passion? Was there a precision involved? Was there a schedule involved? Where, where all these elements had to be matched? It was only a matter of time before they did, day after day. So this is where the steps to the murder, the preparation before, during, and after determines method. So that's what you'd have to go into the details if you want to get into the, compl the complexities of method. Fourth one. This is called opportunity, or the O. This is pretty much the most common question asked by real life policemen and PIs. Where were you at the time of the crime? Uh, this is also referred to as the alibi. And this has to be spoken, if not told to the audience within the first, if not the second chapter. Um, it is one of those things that you have to get around and it is always something the murderer will lie about. If not the murderer, then someone else wants to lie about their their uh, up their location during the murder. They want to cover something else up. So that's, again, you're, you're, you're going into the details of every character, which you should be, because that's how you investigate, you get information. And this works with the idea of how clever is the author to use this information of proximity in relation to the crime. So is the crime something that happened where it happened? Did someone move the body? Did, uh, you know, was it a timed event? Like, I don't know, a mechanical, like a clock that set off a bomb. Was it fire? So it, it took time to, for something to happen. Was it a distance weapon, like a sniper rifle? Was it, uh, naturally occurring, like an avalanche? Was it a car where you put it into gear, you let it rip and it you know, hits someone very far away? So things like that, where you have to take opportunity and, and play, play around with it. So it's not just, hey, I wasn't there, it wasn't me. Uh, the other flip side of that is the, the actor or the murderer who is so confident 
that he doesn't care about opera. He's like, yeah, I was right there. I saw it all. Or I had my back turned and I, I don't know what was going on. None of my business. I didn't care. So that there's, there's different ways to approach opportunity, but that's one of the most important ones you have to be very careful with because it's so damaging to the murderer and the whole investigation, really. Because once you once you put those two actors together, the murderer and the murderee, it's, it's you know, okay, well, it has to be one of these two people or one of these three people. Now, the fifth one, this is where things get interesting. It's more or less a element by the detective, whatever detective you decide upon. And uh, think of it like, how Poirot thinks. He only is concerned with character. This is the fifth, the C, the P, character, the profile, the personality, the psychology, whatever you want to call that. That is the most important aspect because it is a mental game. You are you are reading something and you can't just go, well, okay, the gun was here and the blood was there, therefore Bob. And, well, no, there's more to it than that. There doesn't have to be. If you want to go purely empirical, you can do that. And if you don't understand physics or the order of operations between entering a room and pulling the trigger, then okay, fine. But if you want to tell a social or psychological mystery, you need to have this, this uh, reveal by the detective. And it goes something like, you know, asking questions like, does the, the, the character, does the, the person have the character to commit a certain crime? Um, do they have the intelligence, the capacity to, to lie in this certain instance uh, to get away with it. How would, how would a stupid person lie? How would an intelligent person lie? How would an actor lie? Uh, you know, the empirical murder, how would they cover their tracks? Those, those are the details that the detective does with the character or, or building of the character. So think of it as, probably not explaining this very well, think of it as taking the three M's and the O and taking that and putting it into a character sheet and going, okay, boom, 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 boom. That's what the detective has to do. And that's why character is has to be conveyed to the audience. You can't just say obvious little thing, obvious little comment here. It has to be this big thing. Says, okay, let me think of the character of this person and how that works. And this is what they'd have to do. So essentially this is this puzzle, this part of the puzzle piece this detail is the detective opening the door for you, pulling back the curtain just a smidgen and going, look, this is what it is or isn't. And not lie. obviously you can't have the detective lie to the audience. That's ridiculous. So the, here the, the, the character or the profile of the psychology is where the detective is constructing this profile of the murderer for the audience. Uh, in one way or another, in, in the empirical sense, in the in the psychological sense, in the social sense, that whatever, however you choose to describe that. And you can help the audience along as much as you like. You can use it to just, you know, fill the box for means, method, and motive. You can connect two pieces of evidence or, or show the implication of two pieces of evidence. Um, you can uh, eliminate suspects, which is not a bad thing. It's sort of like, okay, if they're really off the mark, then you can say, no, it's definitely not this guy. So you can't do that too often, obviously, but these are the things that you have to do within the content of your sentences. And they should have at least one of these five things always. Obviously, character is number one, but you know, don't skimp on, on playing with the idea of the alibi or the method. Those are very important as well.